Hello everyone and welcome back to Trek Yards. I'm Captain Foley. And I am Quan Kung. I think we're in the safe timeline universe, but maybe not everybody everywhere is, and we're not quite sure. Maybe I could I could be having a dream. Am I actually here? Is it really 2026 I... and you're going back to, to change all the Trek Yards? No, I think you're probably you. Maybe just sleepy or something. I don't know. Maybe. Or hungry. Maybe. Mm. Mm -hmm. I'm hungry. <laughs> Today we're here to talk about Giorgio. She has stepped through this door and... A literal door. It, yes. And is now in uh, uh, the back in the mirror universe, back in time. Or is she? Exactly. We're here to talk about that, the possibilities. A lot of people are confused and think she is back in time, saying, is she going to stay there? Is she going to change things? And we have some thoughts on that, and we're going to talk about those today. And it's funny because, you know, everyone has the first reaction because we all come from different perspectives. Some fans haven't even watched all of TRS, all of DS9, whatever, so their context is different. And when I first watched it, and you tell me what you think as well, when I first watched it, I did not even think for a second it was actual time travel. Based on the context of the story and the point of the journey she has to be in, it was obviously to me a reference to Tapestry in which Q shows Picard an alternate universe and allowing him to live and make his own mind up. So I didn't think it was time travel, and so I was taking everything as a fun what-if scenario rather than any sort of real, she's changing history, rah. That's what I took from it anyway, straight away, without even any, like, doubt. What, what did you think? Yeah, no, I was the exact same way. Um, it just it seemed like the natural progression for things to kind of, either that, either it's like a tapestry thing where it's a Q-related thing where they, they she's actually reliving her, her past, or it's literally like a test uh, of some sort to see how she uh, reacts to things now, um, having been in the, in the uh, regular our universe for a while. Either either one is fine, and I, it'd be interesting to see how it plays out. I, I, I didn't I didn't think it was actually her going back in time to her universe until other people started mentioning it on, online, and I'm like, okay, well, let's think about that possibility for a second. There's too many things that have gone wrong in this one. Um, including the whole Stamets trying to stab her, Stabitz, <laughs> and uh, uh, him dying, because that never happened originally. And he started messing with the mycelial network and stuff. So, I mean, there's a lot that's already changed, um, which would affect Mirror Mirror and TOS and DS9, all those Mirror episodes. So that is too much on the plate of, mm, yeah, it's not going to work for me. Now, the only problem with it being a test or a tapestry situation, obviously for tapestry it has to be, you know, looked over by a, a Q light being for it to work. But the whole like, a test doesn't make sense in in the sense of what she's going for is to solve a genetic problem that her DNA, her molecules, in a very science way, don't connect with our universe and being pulled pulled back in time and universe. So already there's a disconnect between well why is if it, so if it's not time travel what's the point in her learning a lesson there is no point you can't you know metaphorically fix your universal molecules by deciding to live in another universe it's not how that works now if it's, a, if, it's a, if it's a tapestry then q can just or whichever being can just change it and say okay no you do deserve this whatever it being time travel directly does fit more with the idea of her being solved because then she's just going back into the past and she's no longer dying. So I can see why people might think that, but yeah, the fact that so much has changed, unless they're actually going to undo Discovery Season 3, which is what would you'd have to do, literally everything we've seen would have to be undone because the simple fact of Stamets not causing mycelial damage would not lead to this Y, B, C, you know, A, B, C, D, E, and Discovery Season 2 will not happen, Season 3 will not happen. The fact that this Giorgio knows about Lorca, which means the coup would never happen. Because remember, Lorca hasn't gone back into the Prime Timeline yet. So Lorca would be killed without going back. Lorca would never be discovered, never be, you know. If they actually, if that's why I never thought it was time travel. Because just the, you know, singular events we've seen are the Season 1, 2, 3 would never happen. And therefore, we're undoing them. That's never happened in Star Trek. You know, even in um, Year of Hell, it was a two-episode special situation you're not going to undo three years and while we're obviously fans of making things more canon why they bother wasting so many episodes learning about the future to then undo it doesn't work now it could also be an alternate universe an alternate alternate mirror but whatever waste what a waste of time that is at that point it's just who cares you know you're not changing the past or the, you're just changing another universe that's new yeah but i think them undoing all of discovery would make a lot of people happy <laughs> um 
uh, have it fit more into the prime timeline like they wanted it to by correcting a few things. But that wouldn't. It it wouldn't. It wouldn't. It would correct the whole Lorca thing. But he would just not push for the discovery to be built a bit quicker and have the crew. Every every design would look the same. It wouldn't change anything drastically. The Klingon War. The Klingon War would even happen because that wasn't Lorca at all. Lorca was after that actually. That's the thing. It, it would be everything would be different, and then what season three would not exist, and then so that doesn't can't be time travel. But obviously, people have commented that she's still got the armband on, which is odd. Although it would imply a more physical transition between time and space rather than a tapestry style. You know, he was lying on a bed, dead or dying, and also in his own you know separate universe with Q. So it's kind of a they're kind of playing both sides a little bit. Yeah, but I think the armband's interesting because it went green when she walked through the door. It mm -hmm. was closer to red when she before she did. Mm -hmm. um, uh, so that's interesting. He says there's other ways to die, which in the mirror universe is around every goddamn corner. Now, the thing, thing that's interesting to me is that maybe she is back in time. She has to die in her own time for her molecules to reset so that they can be reintegrated into this future timeline. So when she comes back through the through the door or after she gets killed in the mirror universe perhaps which is back in time or isn't is in an alternate timeline i don't know anyway regardless she gets killed back in time her molecules are then dead at that point and then she can be reborn in this this universe in the future and have the molecules basically reset and so that's what has to happen um it's not actually the our true timeline for the mirror universe maybe it's a different alternate mirror universe um, or something along those lines because I could see that being that's the only real explanation I have for her actually going to a mirror universe um, it just it's not our mirror universe because it would have changed everything else um, which then is, I think, is, is a, a weird thing to do because then obviously yes. by just by doing that that kind of tells you discovery isn't the prime timeline because if they can just create their own separate side versions of timelines then obviously like it's so different something happened at some point why would it you know it, it, i mean it's I guess it's kind of excuse for it to happen i mean also there, there is a slight problem though in that and in any we are obviously trying to put logic to this but if you recall with um you know michael Bohm's mother appearing in the in the future you know she appeared on a different planet without a suit somehow managed to get across the galaxy you know all these things they didn't even bother trying to explain it beyond people found me and took me here it's like yeah but that's it's not a good enough reason. So while they have been better overall in there because they may not really understand or want to understand. I mean, have you seen Star Trek Picard? I mean, there's a massive gaps in logic there as well. And obviously, let's not talk about season one, season two of Discovery. Fully filled. I mean, there's more gaps than almost content. So we're assuming they know what's going on. Maybe not. That said, if it is a literal, literal Guardian of Forever, although, you know, as I said, Doorway of Forever, but just another planet one, then that being, or that type of being, does have sort of power to maintain reality so maybe it's able to but then that's just a MacGuffin it's, it's just a MacGuffin of, well she completely broke her timeline and she was brought back anyway um like like the way they're playing it she can't just walk through another gateway she'll change the universe that's why it has to be a tapestry it has to be an old alternate figment you know it's the only thing that makes more logical sense and and because they're not going to explain to her what and how she's kept the armband because it still lets her be confident in her reality. If she didn't have it, the Giorgio might think she's dreaming. Like, something as simple as that. The whole tapestry thing is, I think, the answer to this. Um, I really do. Uh, but people might not understand what we're talking about. There is an episode in TNG called Tapestry, where Q... Uh, basically, Picard is on the on in sickbay dying, and he, uh, Q shows up, and I'm God! And he shows him, throws him back in his own timeline, um, and has him make a few different changes um kind of it's a wonderful life type deal um and picard does that and ends up being a science officer not a captain and you know a lieutenant i believe um as well so th that's what we're talking about if you guys didn't know most of you probably did i i still maintain that she's going to walk through the door and literally like a second would have passed and all of this that has happened in the mirror universe um is literally within that second so it's going to be some kind of uh test or realization that this universe she's in isn't so bad i guess um which is interesting and it, yeah i think very much it's a tapestry moment um that's the only thing that makes any kind of sense but 
Um, whether it's the Q or the Guardian of Forever or a Guardian of Forever, uh, we will talk about that in another video, um, whether it be alive or otherwise. Um, so tune in for that conversation as well, guys. Um, I mean, it's it's a it's a thing where we hope they've given it a lot of thought. It's super interesting and and still is fun on its own. And this is where we said before the setup is interesting. The payoff had better be good. Um, but you know, often the simplest way is the best way. And just having it be a queue like entity or Trelane like variant of a queue, and then can fix the molecules because hashtag YOLO. Um, because, you know, while we've only met a couple of Q, if you look at how the John Delancey Q versus the Sun Q, very different, very different personality, and then to the suicidal Q, like, again, very different mm -hmm. personality, and even the Mun Q. Corbin Burns scene. The Corbin Burns scene Q. Yeah, there you the go. single appearance. So yeah. I, I would be absolutely fine with the, the, and it wouldn't be a retcon, just the simple idea that, yes, this, you know, the, the, the sphere data knows this planet, knows that a Q likes this planet for whatever reason you know is it all space and time but likes this planet like a doctor and a doctor who likes earth because why not and so you know he goes to this planet gets his attention etc and this this queue happens to like helping people you know like likes to you know be part of the lower planes in different ways that's not a huge retcon i'm sure there's thousands or millions of queues it's not a, you know it's not a big thing you know it doesn't involve any retconning and allows you to have the same fun effect because as as is everything you know you can say what a coincidence but they went to him. And if he's the one thing in the galaxy that can solve it, that's for a reason. You know? It's like, oh, this planet has dilithium. Yeah, it's the one planet. Yeah, it's a dilithium rich planet. We went to it. Of course it does. Because we went there on purpose. You know? And it's not like it was close. It was very far. So, yeah, but still, we will. Oh, yeah. I was just going to say, it's very much got that Christmas Carol kind of vibe. The three ghosts changing your ways. And it's interesting because I'm looking at the calendar. Um, part two will be the 17th. And if it goes to a part three, which I'm, where it concludes, I'm, yeah. which will be the 24th, it'll be Christmas Eve. Did they plan that far ahead? Did they think about that? <laughs> That'll be interesting to see. Um, and it could be. I'm, I'm thinking it might be three parts. I'm not going to rule that out. Well, it does say two parts on IMDb, but it doesn't mean that the third one isn't still wrapping things up. Especially it's since just... the first episode of the season was a part one. And there was no part two. So That's true. That's true. Uh, and there's multiple sort of continuing episodes in season one two that are not like part one and part two directly and besides well although one thing we're going to see next time because if she is changing time then that would explain why we never cut back to discovery because that discovery no longer exists in that universe etc um so as soon as we do cut back to discovery i'm wondering if those sequences in the, in the trailer will be after she's got back because then they can kind of cut back to reality because as soon as you cut back to the present it devalues her that a little bit. It's like, it shouldn't be concurrent. It should be, like, the focus is important. So I don't want that into... Yeah, yeah. that's why I'm glad they went when they went to the Mirror Universe, they stuck with that for the rest of the episode. Um, and yeah, guys, we will be doing our prediction video on Wednesday at our regular live time. So be sure to tune in for that where we talk about next week and what might happen. Um, but guys, put your comments down below what you think she is doing right now, whether she's back in time or that she's in her own universe, another universe, whether it's just a tapestry type deal. What's going on? Let us know. Um, and we look forward to your thoughts. Also join us for the lives as well, which is a great way to support the channel. So make sure you're subscribed, click that notification bell icon to all and like this video, like all the videos that you watch of ours. It's all important and helps us out. And that is a great helpful way. We're never going to devalue the, the, you know, what a like can give. But if you want to help us more directly with something that does help us more substantially, then donations do help this channel go. And you can do it in a couple of great ways. As you guys know, uh, one of our favorites is the Super Chat way, which is you can join a live stream. We do many on many topics. And you get to have a direct conversation with us and can often spark something brilliant, interesting, like, oh, you know, who knows? Or if you want to do something more passive, then the Patreon, join the channel. Both are monthly, both super, super help. Um, or a one-time donation at PayPal at trekgirls.hotmail.com. That goes towards show costs and new kit. All of them work. All of them are appreciated. So if you can, please do. If you can't, just watch and enjoy. That's right. So until next time, guys, I am Captain Foley. And I am Connor Congress. Bye, guys. Bye, everybody.